When we look at the Neptune ingress, which is just a couple years later in 2025, Neptune is going to be moving solidly into Aries. And again, we see a stellium in Aries at the time. So uh, this is definitely going to be a powerful time for just the entire globe. Um, again, we see a preponderance of planets in this part of the zodiac. So when you see this much going on, when you see a stellium between two signs of the zodiac and not very many other things scattered around the rest of the wheel, you know that there's going to be a time of intensification of focus. And, you know, with things being at the end, so Pisces is the end of the zodiac, Aries is the beginning. So you see this kind of energetic, even just looking at the chart energetically, you can see Saturn is near the end of the zodiac, um, Venus, the North Node, and Ceres, and Mercury are all at the very, very last degrees of the entire zodiac. And then it starts with Neptune at zero degrees of Aries. Neptune and Aries... Wherever Neptune is um, in the Zodiac is a reflection of the ideals of the mainstream of society. So when you have Neptune in Aries, the mainstream ideals of society are forged of fire. Um, society is going to likely want the mainstream of society is going to likely want to be direct. Um, Aries is a sign of honesty and directness. Aries is a sign that doesn't care as much about uh, feelings and more wants to get things done. Um, it's a sign of initiative and action. And it's a sign of uh, personal power. You know, it's a sign of individuation from the collective as well, because Pisces is the collective consciousness. It's the watery, emotional, spiritual side of life. But when Neptune moves out of Pisces and into Aries, suddenly the ideals of society shift from being collective oriented to being individual focused. And what that means is that people are likely going to crave independence they're going to crave making their own decisions for themselves. People are going to want to have control over their money. They're going to want to have control over their choices. It's going to be more, it could be potentially, you know, more self-focused at that time because in, in the mainstream, because people are going to be coming out of this, you know, Neptune and Pisces energy, which is very, um, it's a lot more focused on the emotions. It's a lot more focused on, like the mainstream is more focused on processing collective pain and collective wounding. But as Neptune moves into Aries, it's showing this shift from worrying about what's going on with everyone else to worrying primarily about the self and wanting to move the self forward, wanting to see personal momentum happening more than wanting to, you know, take care of everyone else involved. Um, and I'm not saying that's good or bad or anything like that. I just, that's kind of what I see with the symbolism. If Neptune represents society's ideals, so society is going to be idealizing Aries themes, which are the hero's journey. It's the individual's choices. It's the individual's tasks in life. It's rising above the challenges that are unique to each one of us in our own unique life experience. Rather than thinking so much about the collective and what's going on with other people, there's going to be a big focus on what do I personally need to do, right? It's almost kind of reminds me of that Kennedy quote, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. That's the Aries energy. It's a very can-do attitude. Um, and it can be aggressive, yes, but that's only one facet of the Aries mentality. The other facets are curiosity, playfulness, wanting to move forward, like wanting to advance, wanting to take action, um, being hands-on as well, um, being very involved. Individuals may be less inclined to give their decision-making process over to governing bodies, for example. They may want to retrieve 
um, any of those choices that they previously had allowed other people to make for them, they're going to more vehemently want to make those choices for themselves. And I think crypto is an option that really gives people the ability to do that. Because again, if you hold currency from a country that is allowing central banks to debase it, then you're not really in control of that currency. So I could definitely see that by 2025 and possibly even earlier than that, we could see some shifts that are going on in governments. Governments could be doing things up to that point to uh, either debase currency or to recover losses or to recover tax revenue um, or to pay off debts, right? Um, countries all over the world could be employing practices that citizens find unpalatable. And by 2025, we could see a mass exodus from systems of collective control, moving more into individuals choosing, wanting to choose for themselves and wanting to control the value of their money themselves. On July 7th of 2025, Uranus will actually ingress into Gemini and he will move backward back into Taurus uh, for some time until 2026, but this is the first time that Uranus ingresses into Gemini. Um, and one of the things that I find so interesting about this chart is its relationship to the US natal chart. So let's take a look at that. So here's the Uranus Gemini ingress, the first one that's happening in 2025 on July 7th. There's some really fascinating things going on in this chart. So one of the things that we can see really clearly is that by this date or by this general time in the year of 2025, um, Saturn will have made his ingress into Aries and will actually be on the fourth house cusp of the United States and conjunct Neptune. The Saturn-Neptune cycle has been associated with collectivist movements such as socialism. Um, and so some people see those two planets moving together and their collective cycles as um, a form of as a form of reflection in the collective to recognize where movements um, begin and end and the collective cycles that we experience. So Saturn and Neptune have been associated with collectivist movements such as communism and socialism. Saturn and Neptune being conjoined on the fourth house cusp shows that the United States could be going through some kind of a rebirth when it comes to um, economic systems. And the fourth house is a very sensitive house cusp in any chart, and a mundane chart is no different. Um, it really represents the foundations of society, and when the foundations of society are in, locked into an unusual or a, you know, a powerful conjunction like this with Saturn and Neptune, you could see some major shifting going on in regards to what people, um, what the collective attitudes are towards different financial systems. Um, it's really like the foundations of our society are being uprooted in some way by Saturn and Neptune on the fourth house cusp. The south node will be conjoined with Neptune, um, with the United States Neptune. So this also is indicating a, um, a releasing of energy and a releasing of um, negative aspects of the ideals and negative aspects of Neptune. And the shadow side of Neptune can be that there is illusion. You know, like the, the shadow side of Neptune is deception and not knowingness and being kept in the dark. So having the south node over um, Neptune, um, the United States Neptune at the Uranus ingress into Gemini, just furthers this theme that we've been seeing throughout all of these charts of things being brought to the surface, things being uncovered, right? And illusions being broken. I don't think that this is going to be a bad thing for the United States. I mean, maybe it's crazy for me to say that because this is a very difficult time, but the part of fortune here um, at this time is conjunct 
Pluto, the natal Pluto, and we will have just gone through the Pluto return of the United States as well. Um, and it's interesting too, because you've got the south node conjunct the natal Neptune of the United States, and you've also got Pluto conjunct the natal um, south node of the United States. So again, this is a huge time of releasing for the United States. It's a huge time of letting go. And what that letting go is, is probably going to be related to, um, in some sense, it could be related to the negative aspects of the government up to this point. We could see some major changes in how much power the federal government has. Um, and we could see some major restructuring, maybe even out of necessity, but having the part of fortune in the second house, I do feel that this is a good time for the people of the United States in general. Um, this is a fortuitous um, path forward. However, I'm not saying it's going to be easy and everything will just be sunshine and roses. No, not at all. But I do think that this is a releasing that, you know, apparently just needs to happen. So, um, and this is also happening alongside and, you know, in the years following Pluto's um, ingress into Aquarius and also the Pluto return of the United States as a whole, which that in itself is a huge cycle when it comes to the collective and um, when it comes to the power structures. Um, we're going through a major, it's like our first Plutonic birthday in the United States. And that's coming up even before 2023. So seeing this part of fortune here at the Uranus um, Gemini ingress to me just says that, you know, being that we are a very Uranian country in many ways, we're a country that values diversity and that, de that values people, you know, being free thinkers. We're kind of a maverick country in the history of the world. Um, first country founded on the concept of human rights. First, um, among the first countries alongside Haiti uh, to fight a civil war over the concept of slavery, wanting to abolish it. Um, Uranus is very much an American planet. I mean, it was also discovered around the same time that the United States was formed. So Uranus as an archetype is very closely linked to the archetypes that are associated with the culture of the United States. So as the Uranus um, ingress into Gemini occurs for the first time, this is actually significant because the last time that this happened was in 1942. Um, which we all know what was going on in the world at that time. It was a very, very difficult time. But Uranus ingressing into Gemini, um, you know, it could herald the onset or the ability to move forward through whatever difficult times that we are going through collectively as a society. And a lot of those difficulties could be uh, healed or helped by the the Geminian influence, which again, Gemini is a Mercury ruled sign. It has to do with free exchange of words, communication, money, technology. You know, Gemini is the sign of open source information. It's the sign of freely shared information. So Uranus moving into Gemini, it to me really shows, and as well, we're going to have our Uranus return um, not too long after this. See, you can see Uranus is at zero degrees Gemini and our natal Uranus is at eight degrees of Gemini. So we'll have our, our Uranus return in 2027. Overall, this chart really just shows me um, that we are going to be, we're in for a wild ride. We are in for a wild ride, guys, but I really feel like these three outer planetary charts that we looked at these ingresses into different signs will coincide with major restructuring and I feel particularly in regards to our financial setup not only in the United States but in the world I'm just using the USA birth chart to illustrate these unique contacts that we have I think you'll find it fascinating that in the Neptune Aries ingress chart, if we compare that with the USA birth chart, you can actually see that the Aries ingress for Neptune is actually happening on the fourth house cusp of the United States. 
So this, again, really illustrates that the collective um, foundations that are supporting the United States citizens and our um, basically what grounds us, our, the, our foundations as a country, are going through major shifts as, as Neptune crosses into Aries. It is literally conjunct our fourth house cusp, which is the most sensitive degree of any chart is the fourth house cusp. So you can see we, we're going to have Neptune destabilizing things, hopefully revealing illusions, revealing things that are not true, and bringing forward new ideals that are going to be implemented from the ground up, from the lowest absolute, closest to the ground places in society, all the way up, hopefully all the way up to our highest power structures in society, and hopefully even um, a reduction of the power of those highest echelons of society as well. Um, <clears throat> Neptune will be squaring Jupiter and Venus in the natal chart of the United States, which to me indicates we have a very strong Jupiter in the chart of the United States, and it is um, ruling the sign on the ascendant, which is traditionally associated with the common people. So there is something here about um, the beliefs of the common people being changed or challenged by this Neptune ingressing into Aries. A lot of the common people in the United States are going to be triggered or are going to struggle at first, at least, with the, um, the changes in attitude that they're going to be experiencing. And because Jupiter is involved, it could also be a faith crisis or a trust crisis, meaning that people could have less trust and faith either in their own um, like personal beliefs that they used to hold, or they could have less trust or faith even um, in the government or in institutions. So there's some kind of a trust crisis going on, um, which is already arguably going on, but in 2025, I do feel like as um, Neptune crosses over into Aries, it's just gonna be highlighting that on a very deep, sensitive level for the American people. You can also see that with Mars conjunct the natal Uranus of the United States. So there is pressure that's going on that is pushing narratives to the surface or that is pushing innovation out of necessity. That's really how I see that is changes to the way that money changes hands, changes to the way that most people handle wealth or business is happening because it needs to happen because there's some kind of pressure being applied either from regulatory authorities or from uh, just bare bones need. There is just a powerful need for change which is pushing and driving innovation in the marketplace. So I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. Definitely let me know your thoughts and questions below. I'd absolutely love to hear from you guys. If you enjoyed this, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Also hit the bell for notifications so you never miss a video and I will see you in the next one.